Hoi hoi fellow foodies, welcome to another unboxing video. Uh, today I'm looking at back issues. Looking at three for one dollar fines that could be more valuable if sold the right way or just really find treasures in their own right. To start off, uh, Witchblade, number one, the reprint. Always good to get a high quality first look at that series. Um, my first look was the Yancey Butler series on TNT. Uh, it's not exactly a superhero story. So, uh, it had a bit more room to be adapted then. Weapon Zero! <clears throat> and yes, before you say anything, I am not wearing gloves. I've washed my hands 15 times today. Anytime I touch anything, I wash them again. They are very clean and stripped of oil. This is Weapon Zero, Volume 2, Number 1. Speaking of speculator markets, check out this Wild Star Number 1 cover. The paper inside seems normal, but this is closer to cardboard, much tougher, much stiffer, and it's thoroughly embossed. Looks like this is volume one, number one, that, uh, That thing with his face and all these veins, it reminds me of the uh, makeup effect that makes it look like someone had a zipper over their face and they zipped half the skin. Skin up uh, to the bridge of the nose. I had a friend of mine who wore that. She was still so hot. How does that work? Um, we have Guy Gardner, Warrior, Zero, nine, uh, October 1994. Uh, Guy Gardner, Warrior, um, was, uh, was the logical result of Guy Gardner surviving Hal Jordan going insane and uh, destroying the Green Lantern Corps. How, uh, Guy Gardner himself, uh, gained new powers and the ability to transform, and he, uh... Oh... You know how people like to rail against politics and entertainment these days? I have a Guy Gardner issue here on the camera, so I'm going to just say it. Guy Gardner was created as a rebuke about the Ronald Reagan administration, foreign policy and whatnot, since Reagan was such a great orator. Uh, Guy Gardner was, shall we say, not. The only one in recent memory to have a fouler, uh, more offensive mouth is probably Donald Trump. Now we have, uh, we have Nate Gray. Um, I picked up a lot of X-Man. This is the uh, Age of Apocalypse version of Cable where instead of uh, 
weird retcon methods of cloning Jean Grey to uh, make a woman who will fall in love with Cyclops and bear him a super being to experiment with. Uh, Mr. Sinister just grew one in a lab. Specifically this Mr. Sinister. Um, I noted on the previous cover it said the world's greatest comics. Yeah, this is from this is from a quarter century ago. It, it never not feels weird saying that. Um, and uh, here you can see uh, Heroes Reborn. That was uh, in response to Onslaught. Name shows up. Wee at the bottom. Tiny little text. Uh, Professor X goes nuts uh, after trying to erase Magneto's mind and getting contaminated, and after. Uh, he becomes Onslaught. He answers the question who was the X traitor who wiped out the X Men in Bishop's timeline before they made that a uh, a thing about the uh, X child in the 2000s. And then uh, the editors got involved and said, hey, let's jettison our mainline heroes and have our former employees at Image write and create them. I saw a couple Heroes Reborn titles. Um, don't think I got any, though. I was too busy exploring things I'd never heard of. Multiple issues, like Way of the Rat number 7, number 8, and number 9. These, uh... These all interconnect, looks like, starting with issue 7, must be a left to right thing. Um, I remember that for uh, X-Men volume whatever, number 1, in the early 90s, issue 1 just had four different covers that all interconnected to make one massive image. Um, this looks like... Uh, it's from when manga was getting its uh, its influence and foothold. Uh, to say nothing of that Mr. Sinister cover from before, back in the 90s. It's also written by Chuck Dixon. I remember him primarily from Nightwing in the early 90s. Here's something I haven't, I didn't remember. Metro Comics. Wild Things number three, Unearthly Tales of Fantasy, Humor, and Imagination. Previously, when I thought of Wild Things, I thought of uh, launching uh, Denise uh, Richards' career in that one movie from around the same time. Samson Comics is Wax, number one. I'm not sure what this is. Another great thing about the back issue bins, you get to discover so many things. Uh, I have a written series called Back Issue Bites. I never have time to get to frequently enough. Uh, and, uh, uh, it's, it's one reason I like to collect number ones, because that helps me provide, uh, jumping on points, uh, for any of my own readers. Speaking of jumping on points, the fourth issue of X-Men still takes place in the after Xavier, the Age of Apocalypse alternate timeline. Xavier's son Legion goes back in time to kill Magneto early. 
He's interrupted by Charles Xavier, Magneto lives, Charles doesn't, and uh, Apocalypse reigns supreme. I hope that after the movie X-Men Apocalypse, I don't need to explain who that is. Although, who are we kidding? Mm. Look at the liberties they took. Shortly after this, uh... Uh, Nate Gray and three other originals were sent into the main timeline. Specifically, these three other originals. Wraparound covers. See, there's Sugar Man. I'd like to see him in live action, see how these proportions work out. CGI could make it work. Nemesis, Son of Apocalypse. Dark Beast, uh, the alternate reality version of Hank McCoy, and of course Nate Gray. Well, I was a little surprised to see him in blue fur, however, this is, would have been at the time he was impersonating regular Beast. I got me a lot of these uh, Valiant Comics' Exo Mana Wars. Valiant's not exactly doing so hot these days, but uh, ever since the mid new tens, nobody's been doing that hot. Wonder why? Ultimate Creations presents Warrior Number One. I saw just how well the title and credits worked with his hair, and I figured it's also a number one, might as well get it. And no. I'm not going to go through all of them. This is pretty much random. Uh, not exactly the best condition here. This Air Cell Comics' Warlocks number no. 3 by Barry Blair, creator of Elf Lord. The Web and the Fly from Impact Comics. This must have been in the 80s. There were so many independent publishers in the 80s, and it still got the Comics Code Authority. I remember when I did, uh, when I did, wrote up that Fathom review for Back Issue Bites. Um, it's, it's where I review food for a food item purchased for less than three dollars, and as well as a uh, as well as a comic uh, from the back issue bin. Um, if it's good in its own right, uh, like early image tended to be. Um, then, uh, well, it's one more reason to actually get to the brick and mortar comic book stores. Maybe they've got something good for a free comic book summer. Due to the COVID, they're not limiting it to one day, they're doing it over the whole summer. Um, oh, that's right, not supposed to mention COVID on YouTube, am I? This is Wetworks number four. Uh, Wetworks was the uh, uh, the seventh image. 
because um, seven creators left Marvel in the early 90s, made Image Comics, and most of them had their uh, had their own uh, independent sub -com sub comics like Top Cow or Extreme Comics. Uh, Wet Works got cut short because of a uh, family tragedy on the part of the seventh creator. Moving on to a brighter topic, war! Ox number 204 from TSR Comics Module. Another weapon, zero. Image's hottest new star-spanning saga, huh? Oy, I know, I know, I'm such an outsider. So I'm only hearing of this now. Got into comics myself. Early 2000s. Left by the late 2000s. So much shifting and changing and uh, so many uh, compelling behind-the-scenes stories that happened on top of whatever had been written by then. Uh, here's uh, X Factor, first uh, appearance and event adventure of uh, the second team. Uh, if you watch X-Men the Animated Series, this is the X-Factor that showed up. Um, it was a lot of uh, stray characters from X-Men and New Mutants and a couple of new ones. Uh, Peter David, who wrote all those uh, Star Trek novels, um, was a writer on this uh, version for a while. I found a lot of these in there. You'd, th uh, you'd think it'd uh, be worth a little bit more than that. But not this. DC Comics Epic Battle of Dragon Sword The Warlord. The Sorceress's Apprentice, a bold new look for the Warlord. When was this? Paper feels so 80s. Let's see if you can spot it. Yep, January 1982. This comic is nearly 40 years old and in such good condition. I mean, yeah, there's obviously this issue here with the corner. Um, and the fact that even as I scan in old image, ma in, in old wizard magazines, I never find even mention of Warlord. Let's go through three more. There are so many in here. Warblade, number one. Uh, endangered Species by Image. Another one I haven't heard of. People tell me I know so much about this stuff. I know nothing. Uh, Defiant Comics. There's a story and a half right there. Uh, any of y'all know who Jim Shooter was? Uh, as part of a 
contest. Uh, he got a writing contract gig at DC Comics in the 70s became when he was still a minor and uh, he became a uh, the editor-in-chief in Marvel over the 80s and then in the 90s he was off making his own company Defiant Comics. They had a series called Warriors of Plasma and uh, Marvel said, hey, we have the rights to uh, the name Plasm. And, well, you can guess what happened there. Cross-Gen Comics. Another way of the rat. Um, Cross-Gen is currently owned by Disney. It's one of their more baffling purchases. Uh, Cross-Gen Comics finally folded in 2004. Uh, 2004 was their last year, even though they were very young, because, oh, that's right. There was all that uh, financial shenanigans behind the uh, scenes. And, uh... I'm glad Disney bought them so that they didn't just go kaput. Uh, to his credit, uh, Joe Quisada of uh, One More Day Infamy, back when he was still editor-in-chief, uh, as soon as Disney had Marvel, he had the um, he had access to CrossGen and began printing new issues of their old titles, except CrossGen hadn't been around for a whole decade before they had to close up. They didn't get to have any TNT series. They didn't get to have any liquid television experimental animation. They didn't even go the Wildcats route and uh, do conventional animation at the time. Uh, no severely downgraded uh, uh, fall-through adaptations like Mutant X. Um, no cheesy TV mu uh, TV movies like Generation X. And there was nothing beyond the comics themselves for devotees. Um, so uh, obviously no one was so obviously nobody was buying it, and uh, this came out not that long after the stock mark stock market incident of two thousand eight. So. Not a lot of disposable income for something, uh, uh, not recognized. Um, Gordon and Ordway's Wildstar. Uh, number three, oh. I showed you number one earlier. Uh, and look, it's Savage Dragon. Um, it's basically one of the biggest rock stars Image Comics has. Uh, Spawn's no doubt the biggest. Um, but uh, he's way up there with them. All right. Uh, X Force versus Shield. X Factor looks like they had a contest and uh well, uh, it was a creative character contest. Um, I've mentioned before in my written works the uh, Fox Kids contest. Um, to create mutants that got thousands of submissions and shared six of them with any details and then another 20 purely as images. Uh, that, uh,
didn't really come up uh, ever again beyond that. I mean, Disney bought Fox Kids and then lost a lot of their properties to uh, Neo Saban, but then they bought Fox. Um, they should have had access to those contest entries. Uh, And heck, if the best they can do is uh is carbon copies of uh established heroes, they should have more character creation contests. And I'll close this out with Wildcats Trilogy. Um number one. Very shiny. Back in those days, they had all those cover gimmicks. Very, very shiny. Uh, I remember this one uh, Spider-Man 30th anniversary issue that uh, had a hologram on the front. Um, anyway, uh, if you like this, or if you think I could be a bit more concise and offer less insights, um, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that. YouTube's algorithm likes established uh, things, not up and comers or people diverted with other media. Um, and uh, don't worry, you'll see me again. Or at least hear from me. Bye.